sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Then cross your eyes. Man, sway in the morning. 28 minutes into our third base is here. Uh, Shade four five. Step into the AM. Woo. What a uh, man. Sway. Talk record, about man. it. I, I mean, I was in Cali at the time that came out in. It was just amazing to see you guys because there was nothing l like it, in my opinion, um, at that time. Uh, first of all, you guys were extremely lyrical, which uh, for us um, at the Wake Up Show uh, was a prereq. We didn't at that. You know how we were searched back then, man. I didn't care who your crew was, who, who your label was. Mm. Hey, man, can you rap? Mm. You can know, you drop a hot sixteen right at the drop of a dime. There it is. It's always <clears> been that. You yep. know, and uh, this song in particular, man, uh, step into the AM. You guys have very the the, the sample, uh, the, the, way, the way you sampled the, the production of your songs was very, in my opinion, advanced and complex. The same production style could be utilized today uh, with an artist, and I could see them succeeding. Who? How did y'all come up with that track, step into the AM? Go ahead, Pete. Pete, nice. Actually, that one, we had a number of ideas, and we had a lot of our original demos done uh -huh. with uh, Russell and Lior, and uh, Russell wanted to get us in with the Bomb Squad, so we actually sat down with Keith Shockley and Eric Vietnam Sadler, and of course, Hank Shockley was the hottest producer at the time, and we just kind of sat in the lab in Hempstead with Keith and Eric, and we were like wondering... Hey, yo, where's Hank Shockley? Isn't he the big producer? <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. But no, they worked as a team. So Hank would come in and they would all Hank collaborate. Would look at the but... board. He would look at the board. He would touch something and then he'd leave for like six hours. Uh -huh. And then he'd come back six hours later. And and we collaborated with, and we really worked well with, with Keith and Eric. And any idea that we had, you know, just throw it out and work with it. And there's a lot of ideas that they came up with and that we, we came up with. And uh, we just really gelled perfectly with, with them. Pete doesn't get a lot of credit, but a lot of the tracks, like he was an architect of a lot of the tracks that we did. Like he would really come up with the samples, the Gary, the Gary Wright samples, the Cure samples, like all the obscure samples that we used. Uh -huh. Pete had like a stash of vinyl. He was like, "Yo, sample this, sample this, sample this." You know, and Yo, again, all the, the producers ones we got sued for all yeah. the ones we got sued for. Take credit for controlled that. composition, eighteen well, what, controlled but, compositions but, on one song. But 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 you weren't clearing samples at that time. Is no, that we were we were trying. We were trying to clear samples. We were uh -huh. trying to be slick as shit, uh -huh. but we were trying to clear samples. Uh -huh. But well, like, yeah, we, Gary we, Wright, who that one <laughs> sample was, his kid came home with a third bass album. He was like, "Yo, what the hell's my song doing on this rap jam?" Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, so, so we had to work out a deal with him. But back back in those days, it was kind of like trailblazing. Like, you know, no one had ever done anything or dealt with those issues. And Public Enemy had a lot of issues. We had issues. Every everybody at that time. Uh -huh. uh, I don't think we got sued by. No, uh, no, we paid off a lot. Of, we I don't think we got sued by Public Enemy for sampling Public Enemy in a bomb no. squad. No, 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 no. Yeah, and we on Def, get, on Def Jam. and Slick Rick. No, <laughs> we got off on Slick Rick too. So pause. Okay, whoa, easy. <laughs> pull, pull, pull out. Uh, Searchlight is here. Uh, Damn, Wonder really? Rich is here. Really? Uh, Pete Nice is here. Um, did you guys just? And I'm gonna get off the race thing, but at at that point in hip hop, did you guys? I mean, you collectively, you knew that this would be a different. It would be different, and, and you would have to break through some doors. And how did y'all strategize that? Oh no, Just we had a perfect strategy. I mean, do you want to talk about it? Or? You could you talk about it. We basically said we don't want anybody to know we're white. Okay. So it wasn't the day of the internet. There was no internet, so we said no press pictures, no press packets. Mm -hmm. Just put out the single. Mm -hmm. Just put out the single. We don't want anybody. No shows. We're not doing any shows. No interviews. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And then um, a very famous playwright, this uh, writer named Playthel Benjamin, found out we were white. And he did a whole piece on the Village Voice called Two Funky White Boys, made the cover. And then then it just kind of went out there that we were white. But mm -hmm. we didn't want anybody to judge us on the color of our skin. They wanted We wanted to be judged on the music. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to be judged on our skills and our lyrics. And those lyrics were actually written for Rakim. That whole record was really? written for Rakim. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. We got called. You remember this? The Lior story, I, I remember. Yeah, well, I, I kind of yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> no, like, no, whatever. I, I was getting confused when we wrote the lyrics for Richie Houdini. Rich, what for, up, man? For, no, 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 Houdini, Houdini, right? I'm letting them do it. I'm letting them do it. No, so we got a call from Lior who used to manage us, and they were like, "Yo, Rakim's kind of stuck on his album. Do um, you guys think you could write something?" Mm -hmm. Wow. So I called Pete, and I was like, "Yo, Pete, I I got this idea for Rakim called Step Into the AM." 
so we start writing it, and it was just like flowing out of us, flowing out of us. So I go to Rush Management. I go to Lior. He calls Eric B. And uh, he goes, yo, you know, and Lior with his husky Israeli accent. He's like, Eric, Search has written a hit for you. It's a smash. Search, tell him. So I go, yo, Eric, we wrote this song for Rakim called <laughs> Stuff It To The AM. And you hear, ooh. Oh, yeah. And then you hear the secretary go, uh, Lior, Eric B is on the line for you. He doesn't want to. <laughs> And he flipped the fuck out and just spazzed out on Lior, like, yo, how you gonna let Search write for Rock Cam? He's the greatest MC of all time, blah, 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 blah. So we wrote the oh. song and we just wound up just saying, you know what? We'll just take it for ourselves. And then two weeks later, he finished his album. Wow. So we lit a fire under Rock Kim a little bit uh -huh. and then they finished their second album and then we just kind of kept the song for ourselves. Oh, damn, I never heard that one. Me right there. neither, God, sweet. Damn. Damn. Wow, wow, wow. The history goes on. All right, now, uh, when you guys, you guys, when you put out uh, Cactus, when y'all put out your first album, it just seemed like the, the, the sky was the limit. But you, you guys, when did y'all first break up? Uh, Right right after Derelicts. Right after Derelicts? Well, when we were on that tour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What broke y'all up? The real story. Well, I, I, I remember being in a... At a Hot 97 show uh -huh. where they wanted Marky Mark to open up for us. And we told Leo that we weren't doing the show. And then we're going to finish that story right after this song <laughs> okay. right here, okay? okay? Why they broke up. Third base is here. Sway in the morning. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.